welcome age of vintage society. He said, what's more terrifying than a journey with no destiny? And that's why he turned himself into a reel-to-reel horror man, who later became a master of stage and screen. Undoubtedly, he was an actor of immense talent and charisma, whose motto was, whatever you do, do it with all your might. As he said in the movie, if you're going to be a monster, be a magnificent one. And yes, we cannot deny that Peter Cushing was a magnificent monster. So guys, let's explore the life of the king of the horror genre, who scares everyone to death by his terrifying roles. How Peter Cushing became the master of suspense. I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button and for the Patreons. Peter Cushing, the man behind the devilish look. His unique facial and body structure made him stand out in the crowd. The angular face with a strong jawline, high cheekbones and piercing blue eyes was enough to steal any show, whereas his slicked back hair and tall slim physique looked like it was just made to make anyone fall in love with him. Well, Cushing was not only known for his impeccable style, tailored suits and ascots, but was also a prolific writer, penning several novels and autobiographies. He was also an avid collector of fine art, antiques and other collectibles, who won numerous awards for his work, including a British Academy of Film and Television Arts Award, for his role in the 1956 film The Curse of Frankenstein. Yes, you heard it right, as all of the above. Peter Cushing was an English actor who was renowned for his roles in horror films in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. Although he played various characters in films, the roles that made him more famous were Dr. Van Helsing in the Hammer horror films and Baron Frankenstein in the series Frankenstein. He was renowned for his ability to bring an air of sophistication to his characters, even the darkest and most monstrous of characters. Cushing's unique ability to bring realism to his horror roles was a significant part of the genre, as he was a master of suspense and a true gentleman of the silver screen. His performances took the audience on a journey into a real world of monsters and horror, but with a sense of humanity that allowed the audience to relate to the roles and the stories on a deeper level. Well, no doubt, throughout his long and celebrated career, Peter Cushing brought a unique style and class to the horror genre, and made a name for himself in Hollywood, by portraying some of the most iconic characters in the horror genre. He is still remembered for his roles in films such as Frankenstein and Dracula and the Star Wars franchise. Cushing had a distinctive look and was named the real-life Dracula because of his sharp chin and reddish eyes. Moreover, he was known for his intense performances and ability to portray characters with a sense of vulnerability and oddness. Cushing was highly respected for his work in the horror genre and was often praised for his capability to bring life to his roles. Well, not only this, but he was also praised for his ability to create suspense in his characters, often leaving audiences both scared and intrigued. But portraying an evil character was normal for Cushing, as he was born with a devilish look, but a soft heart who loves to scare people not with guns, but through his stunts. Yes, you heard it right. He was not a little angel, but surely a little devil who was born on 26th of May 1913 in Surrey, England. Cushing was the youngest of five children born to Nellie Maria and George Edward Cushing, a quantity surveyor. Cushing's early life was marked by financial hardship, and he was raised in a strict Methodist household. His mother strongly influenced his life and instilled a strong work ethic and respect for religion. Well, Cushing was a bright child and enjoyed school, excelling in English, maths and Latin. He was intensely interested in the sciences, particularly chemistry and biology, and dreamed of becoming a doctor. But this dream was cut short due to World War I, which resulted in enlisting his father and brothers in the army. And due to this unexpected turn in his life, Cushing left school at the age of 15 to help support his family. He worked various jobs, a clerk in an insurance office, a bookseller and a bank clerk, but found peace in theatres by enjoying the performances, 
and that's how he began to attend amateur dramatics classes in his spare time, which led him to auditioning for a role in a local production, and he soon found himself performing in plays throughout the south of England. In 1934, Cushing took a role in the touring production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, marking the start of his professional career, and continued to appear in stage productions until and unless he found a road to success by kick-starting his acting career in the late 1930s, appearing in various repertory theatre productions. And finally he enjoyed the fruit of his hard work when his big break came in 1939, when he was cast in a significant role in the horror film The Man in the Iron Mask. His performance earned him great recognition, and soon he became a trademark of the horror genre in the British film industry. From Sherlock Holmes to Van Helsing, in Hammers he was the only actor who became unstoppable by giving back-to-back -back hits within some years. Cushing became known for his versatility and ability to take on various roles, and that's how his career continued to grow in the 1950s and 60s, with appearances in numerous television shows and films, including Star Wars and The Hound of the Baskervilles. He also made several memorable appearances in Doctor Who, and was awarded a CBE and the Queen's Birthday Honours. His breakout role was in the British horror film The Curse of Frankenstein, released in 1957. This role was particularly significant because it marked the first time a Hammer film production was released in colour. The Curse of Frankenstein, Cushing plays the titular character Victor Frankenstein, a scientist who discovers the secret of life and creates a monstrous creature in the process. His performance in the movie was so well received that it earned him the prestigious Saturn Award for Best Actor, making him the first actor to win the award. Well, this role and award earned Cushing a bucket of fame, but it was not all for him, as Cushing's next significant role was as Van Helsing in the 1958 horror classic Dracula. Critics and audiences praised his portrayal of Victor Frankenstein, demonstrating his talent and ability to bring characters to life. His unique blend of intensity and vulnerability made him a favourite among fans, and still he is renowned for his roles in Hammer horror films. In these films, Cushing typically played the part of a heroic professor who often battles supernatural forces. His characters were usually determined, courageous and brilliant, and in addition to his heroic roles, Cushing also played villains in some of his other films and set the stage on fire with his villainous looks and fiery performance. He was the one who saved the day by outsmarting the villain or monster, and he was well suited for this type of role due to his intense gaze, which often made his characters seem sinister. Well, Cushing's career was a long and successful one. He was very well liked by his colleagues, and was often praised for his professionalism in his craft, and no one can deny that he was a highly skilled actor who earned the title of coolest villain of Hollywood through his hard work and dedication. He was the one who became a significant figure in the horror genre movies for over two decades, and became a household name in Hollywood. Cushing was known for his intense and thoughtful performances, portraying both vulnerable and strong characters, and often showcased his range of emotions. He was also known for his ability to portray characters with a sense of nobility and charm, such as the title character in The Mummy. His presence in films was integral to the success of Hammer Film Productions, and his performances often defined the roles he played. Well, we still don't believe the one with no industry background became as important as heir to live for Hollywood. Not only this, but he was even tagged as the door to success man for horror movies. Well, it was not only his hard work that helped him earn so much fame, but also his strong work ethic helped him create iconic performances and made himself stand out tall. Looking at Cushing's life reminds us of saying, what you see is not always what it seems, as he was not the same person behind the screen. And despite his success in the film industry, Cushing was known to be a quiet and private person who didn't socialise much outside his work. He was a passionate fan of the horror genre, often watching horror films and reading horror literature in his spare time, but was a lazy potato who loved to spend time at home more than doing parties. Moreover, he was also known for his generosity and kindness towards others. He was known to be an excellent listener, and was often seen lending a helping hand to fellow actors and crew members. 
He was highly respected in the industry and was known to be generous with his time and knowledge. Cushing proved this quote, You are known by your actions, not by your name. And he was known for his good manners and politeness, often writing thank you notes to those who worked with him. The real villain was a real life hero to many, as he was kind and caring, willing to help those in need and to prove himself to be the cutest villain we have ever seen. Not only this, but he was the one who stood against wrong and always spoke the truth with no fear. He was an excellent actor who strived to give the most accurate performance possible, and a man with a good heart who believed in God helps those who help others, by helping all his female co-stars warm up their beds. Yes, you won't believe this, not so social man. He had a very strong relationship with his co-stars, often maintaining a close friendship with them even after filming ended. He had an easy-going attitude and was known for his amicable relationship with his co-star Christopher Lee, and the two worked on many projects. Cushing was also close with his co-star Ingrid Pitt, who he worked with on several Hammer horror films. Well, no one still knows whether Cushing was a playboy or a just-friend man, but aside from his close working relationships, he was so popular among his colleagues for his sense of humour and his love of practical jokes. He was known for his ability to lighten the mood on set and was always the life of the party. Whereas behind the set, Cushing was known to be a serious man who loved animals more than women and was a great humanitarian, often donating his time and money to charities. He was one of the actors who was often seen reading the Bible daily and believed in the power of prayer. Cushing was also a very religious man and attended church regularly. His faith was a source of strength and comfort throughout his life which helped him solve the biggest hurdles of his life with strength, as we had seen Cushing standing all alone with courage on his face when his love of life funeral was in front of his eyes. Yes, we are talking about Helen Beck, whom he married in 1943. The couple met when Cushing served in the Royal Air Force during World War II and was wed in 1943 in Westminster. They had no children, and Cushing later said their marriage was one of companionship and understanding, rather than a romantic one. Helen supported Cushing throughout his career and shared a great love of theatre and classical music. She was also a devout Christian, and Cushing credited her with helping him understand and accept his faith. But not all stories end with a happy ending, as Helen and Cushing failed to become a happily lived ever after couple, as Helen died in 1971 from a brain tumour. Cushing was devastated by her death and said he had lost his wife, best friend, and companion. He later said that his marriage was the greatest thing that had ever happened to him, and that he had never been happier. Well, we can say that Cushing was a one-woman man, as after his wife, the woman he was so close to was his mother, Ellen. He moved in with her following the death of his first wife, and often spoke of her influence in his life. Throughout his career, Cushing was surrounded by strong female characters, often playing the hero in stories with a strong female presence. But still we say that he was the true lover, as many people say the reason behind his death was memories. The living memories of his wife took his life, but in reality it was something else. Just after some years Cushing was diagnosed with prostate cancer, which proved to be the real reason behind his death. The doctors tried hard to save the legend, but it was too late now, as the cancer was in its last stage and the only option left was to sit back and count the days till death, and on August the 11th, 1994, the headlines put everyone in grief by highlighting, Cushing, the villain of Hollywood, is no more with us. Well, his death was met with an outpouring of love from fans and colleagues alike, with many noting his immense contribution to film and television, and still we love him, and his legacy continues today, with many of his films still being praised for their timelessness. Peter Cushing was a completely different person behind the screens, but others had secret personalities too. The truth behind Ralph Bellamy's undeserved reputation. Watch this video and find out. <laughs> 